Welcome again to the Ivory Tower Collections. I'd had some requests after I had shown this, uh, both in my last video that I just released, as well as some teaser images when I was at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo on Facebook. People just kind of curious, wanting to know more about it. That's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to look at probably my largest pickup I had from Portland, and that is this Tempest Miniature Arcade replica that I picked up from New Wave Toys. It is a 1 16th scale arcade accurate representation of the Tempest arcade game. And what I mean by arcade accurate, it is playing the actual arcade version of the game and the entire case of the system mimics the arcade cabinet to 1 16th scale perfectly. It even includes miniature volcano uh, one player, two player button selection as well as an actual spinner control for actually playing the game, or rotary spinner knob. It even includes light-up coin doors. So yeah, as you can see, it comes in this rather large box. It's kind of a challenge for me to film this, given how large the box is. But yeah, it replicates it perfectly, and it's officially licensed. So let me get the lid off of this, and we'll take a better look. It comes packed in the styrofoam, nice and secure. Of course, you have your instruction manual. But also comes with a few extras as well. It comes with some extra rotary knobs, I guess in case the other ones get worn out. I'm not sure, but there's four in this pack here. And then we also have another large rotary knob and also two smaller rotary knobs that you can pop on in case the normal larger one is too big or you think it looks too strange on the machine. You can replace it with a smaller one to give it an even more accurate look. And it also comes with some replacement rubber feet. Now there already are some rubber feet on the machine itself or on the uh, miniature arcade, but it comes with some replacements just in case you need them. And then it also comes with a micro USB charging cable. And that is because you can both power it from a standard, like a phone charger, plugged off of this cable, but it also has a lithium ion battery in it as well, so you can actually charge it for full portability to play it without having to have it wired in. And I asked about it, I haven't tested it myself, but apparently you can get about an hour to two hours of playtime on a full charge. And that takes us to the cabinet itself. Remove it from the plastic. And there we are. There is the arcade cabinet itself. Now I have a few of the stickers on here still that it comes with, but these can all be removed. They're just basic instructions telling you how to use it and what you do first. Also looks like I've already managed to get some lint on my screen a little bit. There was a screen protector on here as well that I've already peeled off. But as you can see, it replicates the look of the arcade cabinet pretty much exactly. On the back, you have a power button to turn the unit on and off. You have a volume knob. There's a power indicator light and charging indicator light here. It's a, it's a dual color. It's going to be red when it's charging, green when it's fully charged. Obviously, we have the speaker here. Now, the interesting thing about the speaker is it's replicating a rear security door for accessing the game electronics. It's not a real door. It's, just a, it's a faux door made of plastic, but it even includes what looks like a little fake um, padlock latch on it and everything where the key lock would be and then down here is where the charging port where you would plug in the micro USB cable for charging it or for playing it as you charge and then here's again the machine so let's take a look at a little bit more at the control panel side of it so as I said before it replicates the one and two player start buttons by using miniature versions of the little Atari volcano buttons so they do light up. They don't blink, but they do light up whenever you're ready to start a game. You have your normal fire button up here, which looks like a miniaturized version of an arcade button that you would see on normal control panels. And of course the uh, super zapper button. And then here we have the rotary itself for playing the game. And again, this can be changed out with one of the other types of knobs or some replacements, or if you'd rather use the smaller knobs. Oh, it also included I didn't take them out of the package, but I'll show them real quick. If you look here, 
at the bottom of the instruction manual, let's see if my camera will zoom in. There it goes. It also comes with some fake tokens. <laughs> there you are. So that's the coin door area. You can see that it's very detailed. And the coin return buttons do have functionality on this. They actually access a menu to change some settings like turning the marquee on and off, uh, also adjusting the sensitivity of the paddle. And then the uh, left re coin return button is actually how you credit or add credits to the machine. To open this, and it does open, you just kind of have to put a nail under it where the key portion is and just kind of lift up. This is made of metal. There it is, you can see. And it does light up from behind. And then, you know, there's a little compartment area down here. I'm not sure what you'd want to keep in there. Maybe that's where you might want to keep the extra knobs or what have you. Right. And then, of course, the screen there, the LCD is in the center portion when it would light up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe change the angle of this camera a little bit. And we'll power it on so that we can get a better look at this thing in action. I've angled the camera down a little bit better so that we can kind of see the display, also see the control panel. You can kind of see the uh, coin door area down here, as well as the marquee. I'm going to go ahead and reach around the back here and power the uh, arcade on. And there it is, it's lit up, ready to go. Let me kill some lights so we can see it a little bit better. There we are, pretty snazzy, huh? And like I said, you can see that the uh, coin returns lights up as well. Right now, there aren't any credits currently on the screen. So if I push the left coin return button, that will add credits. I've just added one credit to the screen. And then all you gotta do is just push, in this case, I just have to push the one player button to start a game. So let's go ahead and check out a game of Tempest. Just like the arcade, you can select your starting web level. So yeah, that's the game. Now, what I'm going to do is I've just pushed the right button here to access the on-screen menu. Hopefully that shows up okay in the camera. I'll zoom in on it just a tiny little bit so we can see that a little bit better. So the options that you have are basically to either turn the marquee light on and off up above. And again, you can adjust the paddle or the rotary sensitivity. I actually have it maxed out as I felt that it required too many turns to keep moving around the web accurately. And uh, that's really the only two options that you have to, uh, to mess with. And then as you can see, it says to press the left or coin turn button to scroll, and you press the fire button to actually make a selection. So if I were to go ahead and just select it right now, I can turn the marquee on and off at will. And then again, if I just push the left button, that'll move down to the player sensitivity. Again, if I use the fire button on this, I believe it's the fire button, uh, oh no, on this one I use the up and uh, player one and two buttons to change the sensitivity. And then when I'm done, all I got to do is just press the fire button to close it by hitting this left button here to go on top of it and then go like that. And then I'm right back where I left off. That's it. If you get a high score, just like the original arcade, it'll do a fireworks display to, uh, to let you know that, and then uh, give you the option to put in your high score. 
And uh, yeah, so pretty cool. So yeah, that's Tempest from New Wave Toys. So yeah, I've been pretty impressed with it. I, again, I picked this up at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Man, they even replicated the the crown, the the tea molding. That's crazy. Um, and it is built like a tank, by the way. This is a very, very nice, well-built toy, I guess you could say. So let's talk about this. So what other games have they made besides The Tempest? Uh, they've also recently released a Street Fighter II arcade cabinet. In fact, that was on display for play and I believe to buy as well at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. And they, of course, had the Tempest unit. They also have built a centipede in the past. So they built a, a replica centipede, including a little trackball. They had that at the show. That was really cool. I believe that sold out, though. They also had a 1942 arcade cabinet, almost in a cabaret style. And that was really neat. So what do these run? Well, on the website, most of these cabinets pretty much have the same price. And it's roughly about $119 plus shipping and tax because they are a, uh, a business. So they... You do get charged tax in most cases. Um, at the Portland show, they were actually running a special on most of these for $90 and not having to worry about tax or shipping because there wasn't any tax to deal with in Portland. But uh, they're really, really cool. It's the actual arcade versions of the games. It looks nice. It looks the part. It's built really well. And, uh, and they're just really amazing. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, if you have an interest in these little miniature arcades of any kind, I definitely recommend you give New Wave Toys uh, a look and uh, see what you think. I will have a link to their website uh, in the video description contents below. So uh, be sure to check them out, and I will catch you guys next time.